Howdy everybody, back for another video here playing some 25, 25, 50 in Las Vegas at a new live stream you might have heard of already. They had Eric Person Week and they're playing some absurd stakes. I hit up the producer and I said, hey, when you're not playing the nosebleeds, let Wolfgang in. We're playing 25, 25, 50. I'm in for 19,300. Don't ask me why, that's the amount of cash I grabbed out of the house this morning. We got our buddy Ethan with us. Got the awesome staff here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna try to run up a stack, make back all of our losses from all these tournaments that we've been stupidly firing. I wonder who's been telling me to play those, but as for now, let's get into this game. Let's go. Welcome in all you degenerates. We find ourselves in this first hand 25 50 50. We are in the big blind. Kier, who is a mainstay here at Big Bet Poker, he's an awesome, good action player for the game, opens up the cutoff 5 3 of diamonds. Pete C decides to call ace 7 of diamonds from the small blind. And I look down at a beautiful ace five of clubs and come in for a standard three bet to $550. I wanna go large here and disincentivize people from putting more money in the middle, but you can see that's not gonna work. Kier puts in the call and Pete does as well. We are off three ways to the flop, which gives me a gutter to the wheel and the backdoor club draw. Pete checks it over to me and in a three bet pot, I decide to go for a bet of $550 once again and Kier wastes absolutely no time before raising me up to $1,300 with uh, just his second pair of threes. Very speculative hand there, but I'm not going anywhere. I have some backdoor ideas and an overcard to the board with my ace. So I put in the call out of position and we are going off to the turn, which is terrible. It comes the deuce of diamonds. When I get raised on the flop, I check it over to Kier, who surprisingly now checks it behind. So I'm not too sure what his range is looking like at the moment. But we see an interesting card on the river when it comes the 10 of diamonds, double pairing the board. And I guess this leaves me now with two pair, tens and deuces with an ace. I don't find much merit in going for a bet here, unless I'm trying to get a hand exactly like he has, three five of diamonds, or maybe a hand like pocket fours or pocket fives to fold. Either way, when I go for a check, Kier is happy to take his showdown value. He looks stoked to turn over the two pair, and he's gonna scoop in that $4,300 pot. I'm unsure if I would have gone for a nice size bet on the river there if he would have even folded a three. Uh, in hindsight, it probably would not have worked, so maybe I saved myself some money, but still not the best feeling starting 0 for 1 in a big live stream when you're in for the most amount of money you've ever bought in for at one time. All right, definitely don't recommend this play, but I decide to limp in for $100 with Jack-10 offsuit. Just trying to keep my V-pip up there uh, in some of these live stream games. You're incentivized to keep the V-pip high if you're at the casino playing your local 1-2. Really no incentive to call with Jack-10 offsuit, but here, I think this is a fine call and we're gonna get re-raised by Tan, who makes it $350 from the hijack. You can see he has me dominated with the beautiful King-10 offsuit. And I didn't limp in for 100 bucks to fold for an additional 250. I put in the call and the poker gods reward me with a 987 bang. We flopped the straight. Absolute nutter butters here. There is a redraw to the clubs. Unfortunately for Tan, he does not have it. So you can see that I have him drawing almost stone cold dead here. He only has 7% chance to win this pot. And uh, I'm not gonna lead out into him. I check it over to Tan who goes for a bet of $300 this point, he could have any assortment of hands like pocket tens. He could have jacks, queens, kings. His range is uncapped. He could also have ace, king of clubs would be a beautiful hand for him to have. Still, when he goes for a $300 bet, all those hands that I just mentioned are floating through my brain. And so I want to put more money in now. I have a great hand at the moment, but I don't want anything to catch up. So I'm going to pile some more money in and I decide to check raise him up to $1,300. In Tan's shoes, I think he has a pretty standard call with the open-ended straight draw. It'd be a lot better if his king of spades was a club for obvious reasons, but I still don't blame him for putting in the call, and we see an interesting card on the turn. It comes the nine of diamonds. It makes it harder for him to have a hand like pocket nines, so uh, I'm only hoping he does not have pocket eights or pocket sevens. That would have us drawing dead, but you can see we have him in rough shape. There's 3,500 in the middle. The clubs are still out there, so I think I need to go chunky here. I like at least $2,000 on the turn, and uh, that's what I decided to do. $2,300 going into the middle. And I think now Tan has a pretty easy fold, which he agrees with me. He postures for a second before folding his cards, and we are one for one on the night. Flopping the nuts, 
feels pretty great. All right, finally, we pick up a premium Ace King offsuit from the cutoff and I raise it up to $350. Tan's on the button and he decides to three bet me to $1,000, which clears the field. Everybody folds in the actions back around to me. Now in a standard game here, cutoff versus button, definitely gonna be coming in for a four bet. I would prefer to have Ace King suited, but this deep, I decide to think otherwise and just flat call and see if we can spike an Ace or a King on the flop which does not come, it actually gives my opponent quad. Look at that flop. Fly from top. To here? Yeah. Tan flops quads. Yes, Tan has just flopped quads in a $2,000 pot. Pretty crazy spot for him, and you can see I have a gutter to a queen. That would give me Broadway. I don't want to hit that, and I definitely don't want to hit a king or an ace as I'm drawing completely dead here. I have less than 1% chance to win this hand. I think the only way I can really win this is if I runner runner a royal flush. So that's definitely not a great spot to be in in any game, let alone a 25-50-50 game. I wisely start with a check and Tan slow plays his quads. I love this check from him. Just let me catch up. Hopefully I don't. And uh, when he checks behind, I do not in fact catch up. My fate is sealed. The turn is not a royal flush card for me. And uh, yeah, I'm not putting any more money in the middle here. I think about it for a second and see if I can get him off a chop if he had ace-king. But uh, there's just not many hands that if I bet out here, he'd fold. So I decide to check. Tan goes for that delayed C-bet of $1,100. Wolfgang gets away, wow. And of course, I'm getting out of the way here with just my ace high. I don't really think peeling here is a smart move. I get out of the way. And uh, yeah, we're moving right along into the next hand. $100 straddle is on and I raise it up to $350 with the pocket nueves from the plus one position. My $350 raise clears most of the field out except for our good buddy Chris, DJ Washburn in the big blind. He puts in the call and we are going heads up to a flop which comes queen, jack, 10 with two spades. We both have a piece of this board. He has the open-ended straight draw on the top end and I have the bottom end. We're blocking each other's outs, but you can see I have the better hand here with my pair of nines to go along with it. When he checks it over to me, I like going for a bet here. I'm gonna have a lot of the queens and jacks and tens. Chris shouldn't really have many of that, so I go for a $350 bet. And he puts in the call with his open-ended straight draw and backdoor heart draw. And the turn comes about as bricky as it can get. The three of clubs peels off, and uh, DJ Washburn wisely checks it over to me once again. And when I get called on the flop, I'm putting him on a wide assortment of hands. He could have a hand like king 10, king jack. He could have a hand like ace five of spades that didn't decide to three bet me preflop. So yeah, a lot of speculative hands there. I have the bottom end of the straight. So uh, I actually decide to check behind here. Not really sure if I'm gonna get any of those pair plus straight draws or flush draws to fold. And I don't wanna bloat the pot up unnecessarily. So I wisely check behind here and we see a board pairing 10 of diamonds on the river. I have the check mark. I can't lose this hand unless I put my hand into the muck. And uh, let's see what DJ decides to do. He wisely checks it over to me knowing I have the best hand. I check it back and get to a showdown and scoop in that $1,500 pot. All right, you guys, this is the hand of the night, the largest pot I've ever played in my life. If you've made it this far and you're not subscribed already, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button and drop a like for some run good as well. You can see the action starts here from the hijack where Pete C decides to limp in for $100 with ace-king offsuit. Kind of an interesting move, so I decide to isolate him and raise it up to 400. My hand is not as good as Pete C's, but I don't really expect him to be limping with ace-king offsuit. I three-bet him with queen nine of spades. Kind of a speculative hand, but it's a pretty great one, I think, especially in these live stream formats. And the action comes around to Tan on my left, who thinks his hand is the best. It's actually the worst. 5-3 offsuit from the dealer button, and he three butts both of us to $1,600. The hands are getting progressively worse as we get closer to the button, but the bet sizes are getting larger and larger. That is until JD wakes up with King Queen of Clubs from the big blind, and he decides to come in for a call. 1550 additional. He puts in the call and the action's back over to me. Now I'm definitely in a weird spot here where I know I'm not good against at least one of the opponents. It's possible someone has kings or aces in this spot. Let's not forget that Pete C just limped in for a hundred bucks and then mucked for an additional 1500. So kind of a strange line there, weird way to play ace king. No judgment here though on Wolfgang Poker. He finds the fold, but we have other ideas. We're not folding the queen nine suited. I put in the call. That means we're going three ways to a flop in a $5,100 pot. 
And it comes about as good as we could expect. Ace, Jack, 10 with two spades. Look at this flop. That sounds like mad Ace, Jack, 10, two spades. JD flops the nuts. Wolfgang flops an open ender and a flush draw. Look at my hand, look at the board. Look back at my hand. We have a open-ended straight flush draw in a $5,100 pot. Pause, look at JD's hand now. He just flopped Broadway. Ace, King, Queen, Jack, 10. What kind of setup is this? Oh look, look at Tan. He flopped himself five high. What a hand, what a cooler for Tan here. All jokes aside, this actually is a pretty sick cooler for JD. We just need to spike one of like 15 outs on the Turner River. And uh, we'll be scooping in a large pot here. Let's see what the dealer puts out there. Hold up though, the action does not get checked through on the flop. Tan decides to go for a C bet. After three betting both of us pre-flop, he puts in $2,100 with the 5-3 off. Gotta love the heart on the kid there. And JD's obviously going nowhere with King Queen of Clubs. You could debate going for a raise because you unblock a lot of hands like Ace Jack, Pocket Tens, Pocket Jacks. Still, I don't really hate him just calling here and underplaying his hand. After all, he does in fact have the nuts. The action's back over to me in a weird spot. We're left with just queen high. We have an open-ended straight flush draw. Do I go for a raise here or do I just put in the smooth call in between two opponents and see what the turn brings in? Definitely interested to know what you guys think. Leave me a comment down below. This is one of the inflection points I was debating in real time. Do I go for the check raise or do I just put in the call? At the end of the day, this pot was getting pretty large and uh, I didn't wanna just stuff it in here for 14K extra. So I decided just to put in the 2100 and we get the miracle card on the turn right away. It comes the five of spades. Sure, someone could have a higher flush, but I have the queen high one. So there's only two ones that have me beat at this moment. JD keeps up the trap and checks it over to me. I don't think I'm gonna donk into Tan when the spade comes in. That looks pretty obvious. So I check it over to Tan once again. If he has a hand like a set of aces or a set of jacks, I don't think he'd check behind here on the turn and risk another spade peeling off. So when he checks behind, I'm kind of capping his range here. I think at best he has a hand like ace king or ace queen for a pair plus straight draw. When he checks behind, the river comes the eight of clubs, really shouldn't change anything. And uh, sure enough, I'm left with that check mark. And now JD is gonna fire out with his flop straight and he goes for a bet of $3,100. I pretty quickly ask him to show me the rest of his stack. I'm in a weird spot where I'm in between JD who only has around 9,800. I have him covered, but then Tan is sitting with a cool 35 racks behind me. If I just shove here over JD, it seems a little ambitious. Tan could have checked back the turn with a hand like Ace King of Spades, something like that that has the nuts and really isn't worried about anyone catching up. So for that reason, I don't wanna just rip it in here, but at the same time, I'm obviously not calling JD's bet. What's the appropriate bet size? Do I just put him all in, but then leave me 4K behind? It seemed a little bit awkward, and at the end of the day, we only have a few time extension chips, so it's pretty weird to throw in a time extension chip and then raise it up. It looks pretty strong. Still, that's what I had to do in the moment. I tossed in one extra chip, giving me another minute, and then finally came to the conclusion that the raise size is gonna be $8,500 to go. Tan obviously gets out of the way with his pair of fives and the action's back over to JD, who goes into the longest tank that I think anyone's ever seen on Big Bet Poker. He uses every single chip that he's given. That means he'll have no more for the rest of the stream. That being said though, if he calls here, he'd be left with only two grand in his stack. Of course he could rebuy. And after time extension, after time extension chip being thrown in the middle, you can see they pan over to my face. In my head, I'm thinking, please call, please call, please call. He's going back and forth, teetering on either option. All right, I'm gonna just go register. JD calls, he knows it's no good. What'd you have? <laughs> All right guys, today is not my day. At the end of the day though, he puts the money in the middle and 28.4K is the largest pot I've ever played. We just broke the record here on the channel. A profit of 16.175 in this hand alone with our queen high flush. Unfortunate for JD, he couldn't get away. But uh, yeah, this is what the whole channel has culminated down to, a 28.3K pot. Shout out to everyone watching right now. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this hand. Should I have raised on the flop? Do you like my bet sizing on the river there or should I have just ripped it and got an additional 2K of value? Either way though, pretty stoked. No complaints taking down a huge, massive pot like that. I just won myself a new Honda Accord. It takes us a bit of time to rack up all of our newfound chips. 
They update the chip count and I have 34.2K in my stack, which if you are a longtime subscriber of the vlog, you will know that is the most amount of money I've had in front of me at any cash game in my life, even on The Hustler. I think I peaked at like 25K before I lost it all away, but yeah, 34.2K. That's what we're gonna battle with. We still have half the stream left, which means we are looking good for a large win. I'm playing 35% of my hands at this point. So yeah, pretty good showing from the old wolf at the moment. We are up 15K on the session so far. This next hand, we look down at the jiggies from under the gun and I raise it up to $200. We're gonna get called in two spots, which uh, from the small blind and big blind, both looking to V-pip in this game with 10-7 suited and jack-8 off. We look down at a flop which comes 7-7-4 seven, seven, with two clubs, and DJ Washburn just completely annihilates his flop with his trip 7s. He starts with a check, the action checks over to me, and I'm going to have all the over pairs here like I do in my hand. I decide to go for a bet of 375, and let's see how DJ Washburn decides to play this hand. Does he want to play it slow or fast? There are two clubs out there, so ultimately he decides to go for the check raise to $1,100. I don't think I can fold just yet. He could have any assortment of hands like ace five of clubs, five six for the open at his straight draw. He could even have a hand like four five or four six and just trying to push me out of the pot. So when he goes for the check raise to $1,100, alarm bells are going off in my head, but at the same time, I have an over pair. Gotta put in the call. We unblock any of the club flush draws by not having a club in my hand, which is very important to think about. And the turn comes the six of hearts. It now brings in a hand like 5-3 and 5-8, both of which I don't really think he's going to be raising the flop, unless of course it's the suited club variety. So when he bets out for $1,800, it puts me in a weird spot once again. Should I put more money in the middle? Should I just muck my jacks? Well, the club draw had not come in at this point, so I'm going to put more money in the middle until DJ Washburn gives me a reason to fold. We're not gonna believe him. I put in the call and we're off to the river in a $6,500 pot, which comes the club, unfortunately. But actually, fortunately for me, because most likely this is gonna help me get away from the hand. You can see he didn't need the club. He already had me on the flop. If the river is not a club, I'd probably just fold this here, try to find a hero fold. But instead, when it comes to the nine of clubs, he bets out for $3,500. In the moment, I'm thinking, what a disgusting river card. He definitely just got there. The end of the day though, that river saved me 3,500 as I make a pretty great fold, I will say so. And uh, in turn though, we are losing a 10K pot. But in poker, when you're losing a big pot, sometimes it's actually making money. And in turn, that fold made me $3,500. All right, jacks did not work out well for me in that last hand. So why don't we pick them up once again, try to get some retribution. I look down at them from the button. This time it is the black variety. Now we're playing all sorts of games here at Big Bet Poker. For one, the $400 straddle is on. Yes, Kier has just put in the $400 straddle from uh, the low jack, I believe. We're also playing the knit game. So anytime you win a hand, you get a button in front of you. And uh, when the last person fails to win a button, they pay out everybody. And I believe this one was $200 a person. So not a cheap chump of change there, but pocket jacks is definitely a great hand to come in for a raise. Normally I'd open it up to like $300 if the big blind was 100, but because it's 400, we have to size up here and I make it 1400 to go. And look at that, Ethan picks up pocket fives, which is a premium hand for him out of the big blind. He's going nowhere, puts in the call. Kier gets out of the way with the six deuce off. That's pretty much the only hand he would fold a $400 straddle to, maybe seven deuce off. Oh, but wait, we're also playing the seven deuce game for like $300 a pop, so he would definitely come in for a raise with that. But when Kier folds, we are going heads up in position with Rampage. We have him in tough shape until the flop comes pretty interesting. King 7-4 with three diamonds. Look down at my hand. Well, I don't need to. I remember I have two black jacks. Not exactly the best spot to be in, but when Rampage checks it over to me, I don't want to give him the option to go for a check raise on this flop. There's an overcard out there. He could have any assortment of hands that have a diamond in it. Checking back seems a little bit weak though because he could just catch up immediately. But uh, let's think about if I bet here and he raises, I'm just in a gross spot. I'd probably have to peel once, but then more money's in the middle making it harder for me to fold on the turn. So after a little bit of contemplation, I decide to check behind. As you guys know, Ethan is definitely capable of check raising as a bluff and pocket five seems like a decent hand to do it with on the flop. He has the backdoor straight draw and a diamond in his hand. When I check behind though, the 10 of clubs peels off and he checks it over to me for a second time. At this point, I think I have the best hand when he doesn't lead out into me on the turn. 
I'm a little bit concerned that he would go for a check raise on the turn, but at the same time, I have jacks without a diamond. I think I need to put some money in here and let him tell me otherwise. So into the $3,500 pot comes a bet of $1,500. At this point, I'm trying to get value from worse hands with a 10 or a seven in it. Maybe even pocket fives would call me one time with a diamond. But what I really don't wanna see is a check raise. I asked him later about this hand and he told me that he was thinking about going for a check raise. Of course, I let him know that would have worked, but lucky for us, he finds a fold there and we're taking down that hand with pocket jacks one for one with them on the session. And uh, kind of fortunate I didn't lose a large one there. All right, this next hand gets excessively large for no reason. Kier opens the button with pocket aces. We don't expect him to have aces because one, he's Kier and he's an awesome action player. And two, he's opening from the button. Pete decides just to call out of the big blind with king queen of clubs, which is pretty standard for him at this point. You saw him calling earlier with ace king offsuit and now he's just flat calling with king queen of clubs which in my opinion is just a pure three bet against Kier opening from the button, but we're not gonna get into all that nerdy stuff. He calls for some reason, and I decide to call as well with my nine six of spades from under the gun. Rampage is in the straddle, and he puts in the call as well with jack seven of hearts, so a wide assortment of hands here, and we go off to a flop, which gives me two pair, 10, 10, six with one spade. The action checks all the way around to Kier, who decides to check behind with his pocket aces, at first glance, it seems a little bit weird checking behind with aces, but it's actually a decent play. He's either way ahead here or way behind against a 10. So don't hate his check back, and we see an interesting card on the turn, which comes the deuce of spades, giving me a little bit more equity in order to uh, crack Kier's aces. Pete checks it over for a second time, and at this point, I think I have the best hand. Can't really be putting Kier on pocket aces at this point. So I bet out for $500, trying to get value against any ace or king highs that maybe have a spade or two clubs, something like that. I bet out for $500 and Kier slow plays his aces once again, just putting in the call, giving me a decent price here to catch up on the river with a spade. But unfortunately for us though, it doesn't come a spade or a six, it comes the five of clubs. I'm out of position against him. Do I wanna pile more money in the middle? Do I wanna check call or just get to a cheap showdown? I decide to go for a blocker bet of around 10% the size of the pot. I bet out for $225. Sometimes Kier will just call this with a random ace or king high type of hand and I'll get a little bit more value. Sometimes he'll just call with a better hand like pocket sevens or pocket eights, which is a huge win for us. And then also sometimes a small 10% bet will induce players to do something crazy. And it appears that is what's happening here when Kier takes out three 1K chips and tosses them into the middle. We go from 225 to $3,000. Definitely a polarizing bet. He's essentially saying he has a 10 or nothing, right? Or maybe pocket sixes or pocket deuces, something like that. Definitely all those cards are in his range. There's just a lot more bluffs than value. And in the past, my small bet has induced players to go crazy. We gotta also look at the opponent and think, is Kier capable of going for a large bluff? At this point, we definitely know that he is. So at the end of the day, it looks a little bit weird, but I decide to call with my pair of sixes. It's a bluff catcher at that. I didn't put him on pocket aces and I put in the additional 2775. He immediately says he has aces and look at my face, I'm shocked. He played that like an absolute gangster and he's gonna win that $8,200 pot. Nine six of spades, never thought I'd be playing $8,200 pots with it, but I didn't believe him in that spot and I paid the price. All right, like I said earlier, the seven deuce game has been on the entire night. It's $200 a person, there's eight other people at the table, so it'd be $1,600 if we could get this through. You can see Kier opens up ace-king offsuit to $300. And I look down at seven deuce offsuit from the button. The seven deuce, come on Wolfgang. I think in a normal seven deuce game, I should be three betting if I'm trying to play this hand aggressively. But against a player like Kier, I don't expect him to be opening and then folding to just a three bet. So if I'm trying to bloat the pot, definitely come in for a three bet. If I wanna play this in position and keep the pot smaller, which I think is the move in the long run, I should just be calling here, but I didn't know that information in the moment, so I decided to three bet him to $1,000. He doesn't four bet me with ace king offsuit. He just puts in the call. We're going off to a flop, which gives him two pair, king four four. It's gonna be pretty hard for me to win here with my seven high. He checks it over to me, and all things considered, this is a pretty good board to go for a C bet on. So into the $2,200 pot comes a bet for me of $600, and he snap raises me to $1,800. In the moment, I'm hating my life. I just dusted off $1,600 with seven deuce offsuit. But actually, his check raise on the flop lets me get away easy. If he just calls here, I'm probably gonna blast off on the turn, unless it's like a heart or another four or something like that. 
But yeah, when he makes it $1,800, I easily get away from this hand. And if you thought that was the end of our seven deuce escapades on this vlog, you would be sadly mistaken. And we got back to back seven deuce. Wolfgang's gonna have another shot at it, boys. I pick him up the very next hand from the cutoff and let's try it again. Let's see if I can make back all the money I lost in the last hand. I raise it up to $350 this time over a $100 straddle. Here is in the straddle. We are going heads up in position with him once again. 10-7 offsuit though is a much more speculative hand for him, which gives me a much larger chance to win this. And we see a pretty good flop, which comes king eight for rainbow. And he checks it over to me. King high board once again, is he gonna check raise me for a second time in a row? Well, we're gonna find out. I go for a C bet and he immediately folds. Heck yeah, we make all the money back. Finally, one for one with the seven deuce game. And uh, nobody likes to see that because they're gonna cough up $200 a pop. The table throws money at Wolfgang. <laughs> like he's a stripper That's really good. Yeah. on Sunset Boulevard. Every 30 minutes when the dealer changes, we do a bomb pot. And we decide either single or double board depending on who's on the button and what they want to do. Normally I do double board, but I'm on the button and decide to do a single board this time. My logic? Well, it's not that I hate fun and I don't want to see two boards. I was a little superstitious and the last time I chose double board, the top board gave me the nuts and the bottom board I had nothing. So I decided to just run it one time this time and we flop ourselves the nut flush draw. So pretty stoked that I decided to do it one time. The board came ace nine six with two diamonds and we have the king high diamond draw. Kier bets out with his pocket eights for $200. I put in the call and a few other players do as well. Leading us off to the turn which comes the king of spades, giving me a pair in a $1,300 pot. Pretty groovy. Tan checks it over to Kier who bets out for a second time. And I'm not loving my just pair of kings, but at the same time I have the pair plus flush draw. So I'm going nowhere. I don't think a raise accomplishes much because he could have pocket sixes, pocket nines. He could have seven eight of diamonds and just not be folding for anything. So after he bets the size of the pot for $1,300, I put in the call and uh, yeah, alarm bells should be going off in Kier's head at this point. I just called a pot size bet. Tan gets out of the way. I'd love to see a diamond, but the queen of spades peels off, which all things considered really shouldn't change too much. He either has a set, two pair, or maybe a busted flush draw to go along with it. Ultimately, he decides to give up and check, which you don't see too often from a player like him. When he checks it over to me, I'm happy to get to show it on with my second pair. And when I check it back, we take in that $3,900 pot. All right, we put the $100 straddle out there and Kier opens it up to $300 with ace three offsuit. Pete C decides to call from the big blind with king three off. I look down at the beautiful 10 nine of hearts, could be three betting, probably the better move in the long run, but instead I just put in the flat call and I wish I would have three bet because the flop comes jack eight, seven, bang, we flopped the straight. What's with these 10 nines and jack tens flopping the straight? Maybe I have to add them into my repertoire in my other cash game vlogs. But I decide to check and unfortunately for us, Kier, the aggro player in this game, decides to check behind. How does he check behind here on this board? So much going on. He could have two pair, pair plus straight draws, backdoor flush draws. Either way though, he finds the check and the turn gives us more help. It comes the deuce of hearts. And I'll have the nut straight to go along with the 10 high flush. Pete checks it over to me and I gotta start piling money in the middle. You know that saying, you gotta bet your own hand. That's what I decide to do here. There's 975 in the middle and I decide to bet out for $700. The board is pretty connected. There is that backdoor heart draw, although I double block it with two hearts in my hand. And uh, unfortunately for us, nobody has anything, which uh, you can see my reaction here. Not stoked about that, but definitely feels pretty good flopping the nuts regardless of the stakes. With that last hand in the books, we get our final tally here. I was up around 13 or 14 grand at our peak. Instead, we are up stuck. $4,400 is the profit. Still, I get the title of this video, the largest pot of my life, another notch under the belt. You can see our buddy Ethan absolutely crushed this game up 71 grand. So, of course, I had to post on my story that combined we won 70 grand. Nobody needs to know that I made significantly less than him, around 5% of it. But $4,400, nothing to complain about. A pretty good hourly there. And uh, hopefully they invite me back for another stream. We rack up our chips, head over to the cage. All right, reporting live after this five-hour session here in Las Vegas. Super fun lineup. Shout out to everyone for coming out. We ended up making 4350 
it's definitely uh, pretty good to make money, but I was up 15 grand, so it feels a little bit rough there. Up stuck, uh, what is that, $11,000 after my almost straight flush that turned into a flush. I got paid there in the largest pot of my life. So we're gonna take that. 43.50, we get the title of the video, the largest pot of my life. And it's another notch in the belt playing these big games. I think in two days, they're gonna invite me back for a 100, 100, 100 game. Who knows, Johnny might be there, Ethan might be there. Shout out to Alex and everybody here at Big Bet Poker for having me out. As for now, go enjoy the rest of my videos. Have yourself a great day. Good luck on the felt if you guys play between now and the next time that I post. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.